this forest has only existed because of the efforts of individuals over the years and it's likely the, the only way it will continue to exist. It would be hard to find anywhere on earth of 23,000 hectares or thereabouts which harbors this much biodiversity. The numbers are off the charts. So it is a treasure trove on a global scale. Any first time visitor to a forest like this comes with conceptual biases, perhaps theoretical notions that come from television, from posters, from books, from classes. It's so different to be here and see these things live and really fully understand the complexity and the beauty of uh, the seemingly endless diversity of plants and animals that we have in this forest. Stage one, trepidation. You start out as a newcomer, excited and anxious to begin your first day in a foreign world. A multitude of green explodes around you, overwhelming you with information you are not yet capable of understanding. You are an outsider to this community, and the deer flies let you know it. Their buzzing, mingled with the shuffling of your footsteps against the leaves underneath, escalates to create a cacophony that drowns out the more subtle background symphony, not to be noticed until later on. There's so many plants and there's so many things that it's so difficult for me to understand what is here. I also feel kind of foreign in the rainforest because everything is so green and everything coexists with each other. There are all of these different co-evolutionary relationships, but I'm not supposed to be here, I feel, because I don't have any role to play in the rainforest. Thus, I feel very foreign. The forest is filled with unanswered questions you are not yet sure how to ask. It will take more knowledge, more observation, and more exploration before you can begin to grasp the beautiful mystery that surrounds you. Just the vastness of the forest I felt very enclosed and I just could not even figure out what all the things I was hearing were, you know, because it seemed like there's overlapping birds and insects and just like, I don't even know, things rustling around and I, it was, it was kind of, it was almost overwhelming. It is time for you to let go of your trepidation and open your mind, not only to the beauty and enormity of the forest itself, but to the issues it raises and the conversation that ensues. As one of the most biologically rich 23,000 hectares on the planet, it is the ultimate laboratory, the ultimate classroom. There can be few experiences in the world that from a biological perspective, a social perspective, a conservation perspective, match coming and having not just a half day trip, but an immersion of one week, opening one's eyes, collecting data firsthand and contributing knowledge that helps the world community understand this virtually unstudied and yet immensely complex ecosystem. So in that sense it is simply the the ultimate classroom. Stage two, curiosity. As you continue along the path, slightly more confidently than before, the trail narrows and the vegetation grows thicker. You begin to notice more subtle developments, like the varying sounds of bird calls, some jarring, some melodic. You are unable to see any of the birds attached to these calls, except for a few undefined flashes of color above, but you begin to imagine what each looks like and wonder what purpose it serves. You feel a sudden urge to document all that the rainforest contains and bring it back to share with your colleagues. The forest here is, uh, here at the Children's Eternal Rainforest, is, it's the ultimate teaching tool. It's um, the perfect curricular component or uh, equipment, if you will. Uh, we spent just a couple hours on the first day here with the students, just having them by themselves. And later that afternoon we had a, a brief discussion on their first impressions and the questions and things like that. And based on their observations and questions, we could have built an entire semester curriculum uh, about ecology in general, specifically the forest. You know, it was, it was a brilliant way, I think, to, to start a course with, with them saying, 
you know, what are the questions that I have about this place? I think we did a lot of preparation for the rainforest at school, and I think U-Piece was another way to kind of just study beforehand and try and prepare for this. There's really no way to prepare for going into the rainforest, you know, except for going there because it's just so incredibly different from anywhere else, anything I could have imagined. Previously, you were overwhelmed by the sheer largeness of the forest, but your interest has peaked and you are now overcome with curiosity for what's inside it. Stage three, understanding. You feel satisfied in that you have truly begun to understand what's going on around you. Either from books you have read, science lessons, or some other form of previous knowledge, you have recalled certain concepts and noticed their presence within the immediate area. There is so much to notice and to learn from your continued exploration of the forest that you feel a strong desire to delve deeper. In an attempt to create further understanding, you begin to document and take measurements of everything that surrounds you. Well, my experiment here in the Children's Eternal Rainforest is that I'm testing the sound impact of humans when they walk through the trails. I've also asked that the people walking are going to stay completely silent because we all know that our voices have an impact on the forest around us, but we're not sure as to the extent that our footsteps do. I am doing this experiment because it might be interesting to see the impact of humans on the um, surrounding ecosystem regarding sound. It came up when we were walking in a, in a bunch of leaves and everybody was making a lot of noise unconsciously. So I thought that it would be a very interesting experiment to do in order to test the human impact on the ecosystem, um, specifically when we're just walking. Uh, light gaps are areas in the forest where a large tree has fallen down which opens up the canopy to sunlight so that it reaches the floor. Uh, we've been measuring them and using a GPS. Uh, we're using that to track where they are on the trail. Uh, and we're gonna try to create a map that shows the general area and the general size of the light gaps. As you write down which species are flowering and fruiting, calculate the GPS coordinates of the nearest light gap, and turn on your recorder to document bird songs, you begin to experience true comprehension and with that, a true connection with the forest and all the possibilities within. Stage four, equilibrium. At this point, you and the forest have reached a balance. Your initial trepidation upon entering was driven out by inevitable curiosity resulting from being somewhere completely new. And as you asked questions and pondered your surroundings, the answers you sought began to appear. It's very inspiring to be somewhere where you really want to learn, where you see things that make you want to learn more and make you want to conserve the environment or things like that. I think very few people have had the opportunity to learn about it, um, or we, certainly to, to see it. Um, <clears throat> and we need to strive hard to make people more aware of this and how important it is, how unique it is. Um, and really um, how priceless it is from a, from a global perspective. Well, I think that the most important thing you have to do to have inner peace or eventually share peace with everybody and make it a global thing, it's education. Uh, my conclusion for any problem or if we want to develop in a different way or be successful in a different way I think it everything starts in education you know if whatever you're taught is a principle that is given to you and then you take that principle and develop from it so to be able to preserve the children's eternal rainforest you need the help from everybody I think this is one of the plays you know that brings inner peace to human beings I think going to you peace really brought in the, the part that we can relate to very easily. Like the people and the, um, the pe well obviously the peace and um, the fact that we are all interconnected and we're, it's one big world community. Um, but there's also this giant, like the rainforest community and the Montessori community and there's all these micro, micro ecosystems, micro communities. Um, and it's all so interconnected and I think the the purpose in going to both is really just to bring that home and to, to look at how can we not only um, protect the rainforest, but how can we give the rainforest um, 
maybe not a personification, but how can we make people care? I think it'll be cool to see how, um, how this is a springboard for what happens next, both with our school and with other schools. And I think, I think we've definitely made a good, a good foundation with our work this year.